Over the last three years, I've reviewed about 100 mice. I've also been playing Quake for almost 20 years. There is a lot to mouse choice. Everyone wants different things, and there is no such thing as a perfect mouse. That said, the Logitech G Pro Wireless is a medium-sized, ambidextrous mouse with modular side buttons, currently the best sensor on the market, and it only weighs about 80 grams. 80 grams in wireless is outstanding, especially for this size. On paper, this looks like the best mouse ever made for first-person shooters and possibly MOBAs too. You could even use it for MMOs, but that doesn't mean it's going to suit you. Remember, everyone is different. So I'm going to go through the usual size guides and testing, and by the end of this review, hopefully you'll know if it's right for you, because at the time of release, it's not cheap, but I would say it's worth it. First, I want to answer a common question about wireless. So yes, Logitech Wireless is as good as wired mice. No latency, no performance issues. They're amazing. So if that's your only issue and you're a competitive player, I think it's time to try wireless. But there were two remaining problems, the weight and the battery life. But this one is 80 grams, and only 77 if you take out the bottom plate. If you play using the power play technology, it will be 82 grams. You could also add a 10 gram weight if it's too light, but heavy mice users may want to stick to the G403. If we look in the software quickly, you see it estimates the battery life at 49 hours. That's remaining on a full charge, so about two full days use. But that's with the lights on. With the lights off, it's about 63 hours. This is one of the best selling points of the mouse. A G903 with the lights off would last about half that. The same is true for the G403. Logitech have reduced the size of the battery to save on weight, but doubled the battery life. No doubt mostly thanks to the new Hero sensor. I'll get to that later. I don't think anyone is going to choose another mouse for better tech, other than maybe more buttons and a hyper scroll wheel, which is why I recommend using a two mouse setup, one for gaming and one for work, if you can afford it. So this mouse is definitely something special, but as I said, there's a lot to mouse choice, so let's get into the details. It's plastic all over, and to reduce the weight so much, the walls are ultra thin at one millimeter. Surprisingly, it's still very solid. I'm not feeling any flex when gripping it tightly, so the plastic is strong. And while they added some texture to it, some people might find it a bit slippery. It's similar to what you'd find on the G403 top, but rubber grips have a habit of wearing out, so this might be a good change. Thankfully, Logitech have been working on their shapes, so with the sides mostly flat with just enough curve, you should have enough of a ledge to help with picking it up. Personally, I think they could go a bit deeper with the curves, but maybe they're playing it safe. You can see with my thumb there what the curve looks like. It's the right shape to help with grip. Same goes for the buttons. Comfort curves are there, but not to the extent of the G403, which in my opinion are nicer. The easiest mouse to compare this to is the Zowie FK1, and many people have nicknamed it the Logitech FK, but once you hold them, you should feel they're quite different overall. For example, from the back, the FK hump is fairly flat, whereas this one is rounded. The slope of the buttons is more gradual, which for me is the biggest difference other than the width where my fingers are placed, because there is more curvature on the FK. So if you really wanted to simplify, you could say this is like a bulky FK, but shortened. More in line with the 2 to 1 ratio of length and width, but seemingly small differences all add up. Once you pick these up next to each other, you should be able to tell which is which 100% of the time. There's no mistaking the different shape. Now let's talk measurements. After a lot of feedback, it seems a mouse with measurements of 60% of your hand size is best. If you go smaller than 60%, you might find you'll get cramps in your hands and pain in your fingers. If you go larger than 60%, you might not be reaching your full potential with aim. 60% is the balance. So measure your hand as shown. And now the dimensions. It's roughly four centimeters high. The width in line with the sensor is 5.9 and the length is about 12.5. It depends on your grip style as well though. Being more similar to the FK series, it's not really designed for palm grip. For comfort and actually holding it in your palm, I would say you need hands under 17.5 centimeters. This is more for claw and fingertip grip, and that would be for 20 by 10 centimeter hands, but it could be used for claw between 17 and 22. Note the hump is a little forward, so it may be harder to rest your palm on it. And fingertip between 18 and 22. Each end of the spectrum may have some issues with grip, and the middle is best. Here it is next to some other mice so you get a better idea of the size, and you can see why it's more a medium mouse. But I still say it's on the large side, because the grip width is closer to 6cm. But because of that, it's still going to need a similar hand size. Now for the buttons, here is a listen to the clicks. Logitech continue to impress with their left and right. A nice snap to them, but still easy to press in and no accidental clicks. That's for my fingers anyway. 
Mouse 3 is actually easier to press in than many wheels. Scrolling up and down has just enough tension in the steps, which should keep many Counter-Strike players happy. The side buttons are small and out of the way, and seem to have less travel than the G403. I would say these are better, and you can have them on both sides, or just on one, or maybe one on each side. Having modular side buttons is amazing. Very easy to take out and put in. You get four individual buttons and blocks. So not only can we choose which ones we want activated, but it also means left-handers can use this mouse as well. And you can edit the commands with all the regulars, as well as G-Shift, which is what makes this mouse potentially suitable to MMOs, as you can essentially double the amount of functions on the mouse. There's also keystroke and multi-key macro. The DPI button is safely hidden away on the bottom, so no accidentally switching DPI. In the latency testing, I couldn't find a difference between it and even the wired Logitech mice. So again, for those still doubting wireless, it is time to try it. I can't really comment on durability other than I've used this mouse for a few months, and it's been great. There's no extra sound when tapping it or shaking it. This seems really well built. The cable is about 1.8 meters, smooth rubber and kind of flexible. You could play like this, and I couldn't get an exact time, but I think it can do a full charge in about two hours. It comes with an adapter and USB, and the USB also fits in the bottom of the mouse for easy travel. And the weight balance is quite central. A little toward the back if you leave the plate in though. And just back to the software, at some stage we will all switch to G-Hub. But for now, I'm using the Logitech gaming software. The DPI ranges from 100 to 16,000. And that's in steps of 50. And it's an RGB mouse, so you do have some color options. Including synchronizing all your Logitech devices. We'll see what they do with G-Hub in the future though. I would personally leave the lighting off unless using it with the power play pad, which will mean you don't have to recharge it. You will probably hear a lot about the new Hero sensor, and with good reason. It not only performs as well as the 3366 in all my testing, it's 7 to 10 times the power efficiency, which is a big reason why the battery lasts so long. So all good in rocket jumping, I can't make it spin out even when moving it as fast as I can. With previous versions, I had a few issues with tilting the mouse and slamming it down, but not on this one. It tracked everything. This sensor is just amazing. Zooming in, it tracks pixel by pixel, so your sniper shots should be on point. And it does it smoothly, so rapid fire weapons should be great too. I can't find any acceleration or deceleration. And the liftoff distance is very low at under 1 DVD on cloth pads, and almost 1 DVD on hard pads. The line test confirms no issues. So the sensor is not a worry on the new Logitech mice. Because of the power consumption and some other stats, from what I hear, this is currently the best. But I think only computers and proper equipment will be able to tell the difference. Because in game, this feels the same as a 3366 to me. I did have some say on this mouse in the development process, but unfortunately I was outvoted on the mouse feed. They've gone with the faster, louder ones. But have a listen to the difference between the old and the new. The one I like doesn't glide as easily, but it's quieter, and for me, it gives more control. The new has less resistance, and is somehow louder, and it seems that's what a lot of people like. It's all personal preference. Now some highlights while I give my conclusion. So wow, what a year for mice. Actually what a few years for mice. We've seen so many amazing new mice that it's never been so hard to choose. Again, Logitech have raised the bar in ways we joked about, but didn't think anyone actually would. They've listened to our feedback and somehow made it happen a wireless 80 gram mouse. The fact it's fully ambidextrous with modular side buttons, has a long battery life, and a seemingly really high build quality, it almost seems just a bonus at this point. The only drawback to this is the cost. I just want to add a note on that though. Research and development when making mice is not cheap, and a lot of companies are just using standard shells, and standard technology. Logitech is one of the few companies really pushing the industry. From what I've seen and what I've heard, the mouse is actually very well priced considering what's in there and what it took to make. But personally, even if there was a markup, I would be happy to pay it, because we're starting to see way too many clones on the market. As someone who's searching for the best mouse, I don't want the same one made over and over again. So it's so important we have these companies that are actually pushing the boundaries, and coming up with new shapes. If this mouse suits your hand size and what you need, then I would highly recommend it. It's just an awesome bit of tech, and I've seen wireless mice way more expensive than this. 
So I have seen a fair few people worried about the cost, but if you want my opinion, all things considered, I think it's well priced. Will this become my main though? No, because of how wide it is. You may not think it matters that much, but it does. But it still made me want to play more often than I should, which means I may not switch to it, but I'll probably keep on using it, because it's so much fun playing with a lightweight wireless mouse, especially one like this. So if it suits you, then yes. If it doesn't, maybe still yes. Because if you're an enthusiast, you're going to want to try this. For everyone else, maybe not, I'll leave it up to you. If you want to buy one, I'll leave the usual links in the description, and also ways you can help support the channel. I hope that helps, big shout out to the Logitech team for doing amazing work, and thanks to them for including me in the design process to some degree. My contribution was small, but it was fun being one of the voices. As always, subscribe, like and share this video, and I'll catch you in the next.